Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we continue working on our demake about vegetation versus the undead. Now, last time we began our second attempt at our own version of Plants vs. Zombies, this time taking inspiration from the Tiger Electronics handhelds from the 90s. And in a rare moment of spontaneous decision making, structs were implemented to keep track of plant data. Luckily, the efforts were a success, however, the results show some concern in regards to the overall performance. Which brings us to today's plan. Before deciding to go with Strux, I want to see how GameMaker handles the same data, only this time using nested arrays. This means rewriting the original code to accommodate this new approach, and hopefully by the end of the session we'll have a better idea of how GameMaker's new coding elements work under the hood. So with fingers crossed ever so tightly, let's get to the coding. So yes, we're gonna have to rewrite some of our previous code as well as introduce new elements, such as more enums, just to keep things as straightforward as possible. Two functions were created. The add and delete plant functions work similarly to how they did in the last attempt, only this time we're storing data in nested arrays instead of structs. In this case, plant type and HP. And to make things even more clear, enums for plant names were added. Then in the controller object, previous code was reactivated and replaced with code to read our nested arrays. Then the mouse check was updated to use our new functions. And finally, the draw code was updated to also read data from the nested arrays. The testing showed, oh, wow, my uh, code crashed the runner. Well, it would help if we used the proper accessors. There we go. Like I was saying, a testing showed the transition from struct to nested arrays was successful. Peak shooters could be placed in the grid, which meant data was being written to our grid cells properly. So back in the global script, I re-added the shoot function. Again, this time instead of a struct, it's a nested array holding data for projectile type and X and Y coordinates. The controller stick function was then re-enabled and the code within was updated to work with the new data setup. And once again, more enums were added just to make things as clear as possible. Draw data was then updated and it was time to test things out. Oh yeah, everything worked as planned, meaning our transition from structs to arrays was successful. Now came the most important part, the performance check. So I drew the FPS data to the screen and to my surprise, the performance was almost identical to what it was using Strux. I went through a pretty lengthy test process here to make sure my code wasn't to blame and I'll be sharing the results later. But first, to make sure we weren't just treading familiar ground this episode, I wanted to test plant damage and destructive properties. So back in the global script, I created a new function. Originally, I wanted to make this a universal damage function, but I wasn't sure how these zombies would handle just yet, so for now, this function just applied to plants. Now, the function does is damage a plant for 1 HP, and any plants reaching 0 HP are then removed via the remove plant function. Then to test this, I set up a spacebar check and randomly damaged any plants on the board. And finally, I drew the plant's health to the board along with their sprites. And thankfully, this ended up working exactly as it should. Random plants would take damage each time I hit the space bar, and all plants reaching zero were removed from the board. And with just about everything working based on universal functions, the likeliness of something going wrong in just one unit shouldn't ever happen, which again is one of the beauties of not having to rely on objects to get things done. Now, as for what I learned, who boy did I learn a lot. As far as I'm seeing structs, at least those created via constructor, are cleaned up when they are no longer referenced. The only reason for this assumption is because deleting nested array data resulted in similar FPS behavior. If structs weren't being deleted, then surely they should have a greater strain on the performance. What seems to be dragging down performance the most is, of course, the drawing of the sprites. I was hopeful that wouldn't be the case, but indeed, our method of storing data was not the issue, it was the way that we were displaying the data via the sprites. This means going forward, we're going to stick with using structs, not only because they're new, but just look at all the extra effort we had to go through just to have a similar level of clarity in our code. We ended up needing like three or four different sets of enums to do what structs do in just a few lines of code. I think with enough time and effort, we can make structs work in our project and we'll be better off for it. But only time will tell whether that's just an optimistic dream. But for now, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Let's Delve. So leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and leave your thoughts on our progress in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.